This intro was made with some segment anything model released by Meta AI last week. The model itself is very versatile and allow you to use different modes to obtain different segmentation results. As the name suggests, it can be used to segment anything visible on the image, but you can also pick a single point visible on the frame and extract the full segmentation mask associated with that point. Not only that, but some can be used in conjunction with any object detector to create two-stage segmentation solution. Here, the detector produces bounding boxes and Sam converts those bounding boxes into segmentations. So if you want to learn all of that, just sit back, relax, and let me show you how to do all of those cool things. Before we start, let me just tell you that the model is so awesome that we actually work on integrating it into our annotation tool. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so let's dive in. Uh, as usual, we start our journey in a RoboFlow Notebooks repository, a perfect place if you want to learn more, not only about SAM, but also other computer vision models. We pick the first Jupyter Notebook from the top and open that in Google Colab. Here in the top section, you can find links to original SAM repository and the paper released by MetaAI. And when we scroll just a bit lower, we'll see the first cell that we are going to execute NVIDIA SMI command just to confirm that we have access to the GPU. In case your notebook runs in CPU mode, please follow the instructions in before you start section. The model will most likely run regardless but it will be just much faster if you will run it on a GPU. Next, we install some project in our Python environment. It is actually really fast this time. Some doesn't need a lot of external dependencies, uh, so we should be done in no time. Uh, and in the next cell, we install a few external dependencies that we will use in our notebook. Funny enough, installing those few uh, Python dependencies takes longer than installing the actual model in our Python environment. That's not official stat, but Sam is most likely the fastest installing project we ever had in our tutorials. Similar to other models, we need to download our weights from external link before we load them into the memory. And when the download is completed, we save the path leading to those weights to a variable. And just to sleep good at night, we confirm that the file exists on our operating system. Okay, and the last thing that we will do before we load the model into the memory is to download few images so that we have some examples that we can play and experiment with. And that's it. Everything is ready. We can just pick the right device. In our case, it will be CUDA 0, which means that it will be the first GPU on our machine. And we can load the model into the memory. Like I said in the intro, Sam has multiple modes that you can use for inference. And what we are going to do first is learn the API and use all different ways to generate masks. First step, automated mask generation. This is the mode where you essentially create a segmentation mask for any object visible on the scene. And to use it, we need to import one additional utility from segment anything package. And this is some automatic mask generation. Generator. Now we just pass our already loaded model into that utility, click shift enter, and we are pretty much ready to go. Now to generate masks automatically, we need to read one of our example images using OpenCV and convert it from BGR to RGB and pass it as the argument of generate method in our mask generator. As the result, we'll obtain a list of Python dicts where every dict describe a single segmentation mask. The most interesting keys from our perspective are certainly segmentation. This one stores the Boolean NumPy array describing the actual mask of the segmentation. Area and the bounding box where the first one describe the amount of pixels that belong into the mask. And the second one, obviously, the location of the detection on the frame. To make working with segment anything model just a bit easier, we added a native support for SAM into the supervision. So starting from version 0.5.0, you will be able to process those masks efficiently using supervision. So let's take a look how easy it is to use this P package to annotate our segmentations on the image. So I just create the instance of mask annotator, convert our sum result into detections. This is the object that is recognizable by the rest of supervision library. 
run annotate method uh, using our original image and detections. And at the very end, I can just print side by side the source image and the segmented image. Yeah, I know it looks a little bit creepy, but that's because we have several dozens of masks and we don't really know which class they represent. So we try to use as many colors as possible so that they are distinguishable from each other. We'll explore how many masks exactly we have right now, as well as try to understand which part of the image is represented by each of them. This is also also the perfect opportunity for us to learn Sam's API. So like I said before, the mask generator returns a list of dicts and every each of those dicts contain a segmentation key. We can now use list comprehension to extract segmentation key from each result and display all of them on a single image. At the same time, we'll also sort those segmentations by the area. So we will start from the largest to the smallest. What is interesting is we see sort of duplicates in our mask set. And that's because Sam expects ambiguity and allows you to pick the right mask. So in a real life scenario, that most likely means that you need to add some sort of mask post-processing and select the right strategy for your use case. That means that either you pick the smallest or the largest, or you try to merge mask with the largest IOU, it's up to you. But without any handling, you risk having multiple detections describing the same object. Now let's talk about using points or bounding boxes to pick the area of an image that is most interesting to us and extracting masks related to that area. To do it, we need to import SAM predictor from segment anything package and once again, pass SAM model as an argument. We will use that utility in just a second, but in the meantime, we'll define our bounding box. Instead of just hard coding that manually uh, as the Python list, I decided to use something more interactive. So we will run a Jupyter Notebook widget. And now we can just use our mouse to draw bounding box around the area of the image that is most interesting to us. And when I access the bounding boxes property of the widget, we can see that our bounding box is here. Unfortunately, that information is not stored in the right data structure. We see that we have dict with X, Y, with height, properties and some expect to get four element numpy array where we have x min y min x max y max so we need to add few lines of python code to convert the right structure when that is done we can just pass our bounding box through the mask predictor predict method hit shift enter and we get our mask we need to watch out however because uh, mask predictor has different output format than the previously used automated mask mask generator. Previously, we got a list of dicts where every dict described a single mask. Now we get a tuple of three elements and those are masks, scores and logits. And from those three, the first two are the most important for us. To handle that, we need to use a bit different post-processing. But when we hit enter, similarly as before, we see two images side by side, the source image on the left and the segmented image on the right. But interestingly enough, this is not the result of just plotting a single mask on the image. The model was once again not sure which mask are we mostly interested in. So it returned three of them and just allowed us to select the right one. Now, just to make sure that it was not a fluke, let's go quickly to the top of that section pick the different area of an image and go through each of those cells, examining the result. Okay, so now instead of picking the dock, let's pick, for example, a building in the background, scroll a bit lower, confirm that we have uh, obtained our bounding box, convert to the right format, pass it through the model, and display the result. We see that we got a perfect segmentation for our selected building, and similarly to the case before, the model actually gave us three different segmentations, very similar yet different to choose from. What I love about that model the most, apart from the fact that it works like magic and it's absolutely awesome, is the fact that it works super fast. It's actually fast enough to run in real time. Using bounding boxes like that is actually a great way to annotate your data super fast. And like I said in the intro, we are actually working on including SAM 
into our RoboFlow annotation tool. But in the meantime, let me show you how you can convert bounding boxes in your current object detection data set into segmentation masks. I was looking for perfect example and decided to go with brain tumor MRI images. We can see that those images are annotated with the bounding boxes. And now we will try to use some to convert them into perfect segmentation masks. Let's do it. So first thing first, we need to fetch the data set into our Python environment. We use RoboFlow login to generate the token. We copy the token into our Jupyter notebook, paste it in the input field, press enter, and the data set is being downloaded. Keep in mind to download it in Coco format if you want to make it compatible with this notebook. Now we load annotations into the memory and print the list of the classes. In this case, we only have one class. And in a cell below, we see the code that will allow us to convert bounding boxes into the masks. It picks the random image, load the annotations associated with that image, as well as the image from the hard drive, create a copy of the image and annotate it with the labels create another copy of the image and run it through SEM predictor exactly like before, but this time use our bounding box annotation to pick the region of interest. And when we run that code, we can see side by side the bounding box annotation and the freshly generated mask prediction. As I said, every time that we rerun that code, we will get a different image from the data set so you can just play a bit, execute it through times, take a look at different examples, and examine how Sam is handling different cases. And obviously, feel free to use different data sets, either yours or coming from RoboFlow Universe. Let me know how it did. Okay, people, that's all for today. Playing with Sam is a lot of fun. I have a deep feeling that it's not the last video on this channel uh, where we will cover that particular model. I already have a few super cool ideas for small projects that we can do in upcoming videos. But if you have some, uh, make sure to let me know in the comment. I'm looking for some inspiration. The blog post about Sam is also coming soon. Maybe by the time that you watch that video, it is already there. As well as our integration with Sam in RoboFlow annotation tool is also coming quite soon. Our engineering team is working very hard on that. And in the meantime, of course, stay tuned for more computer vision content coming to this channel soon. Like and subscribe. My name was Peter, and I see you next time. Bye.